for everyone. I think we are officially live. Uh, hello. Um, sorry for starting a couple of minutes behind schedule, uh, but I hope that you've all got your yeah, pen and paper, cup of tea, bar of chocolate. We'll be getting to that later. Um, <laughs> I think I have a slide to show you to help introduce everything that I'm doing. So let me begin with that. Um, okay, I'm gonna start with this. Okay. So yes, hello everyone. Um, this is your uh, special Ada Lovelace day. Uh, drop in maths, games, and puzzles with me, Maeve, and with Linda down here. And uh, we both work at uh, Imperial College London. And we first met doing a festival in 2019 where um, we were creating lots of fun math things in a bar setting. So we, we were both in the algebra, which it was um, fondly named. Uh, so that is who I am ish. Uh, yeah, I work in the public engagement team. And so try to chat with people who do research, really smart people, and then bring it to the public in a fun and engaging way. Linda, do you want to say a bit about yourself? Sure, yes. Um, as Maeve says, I work at Imperial College. I'm in the maths department. I've been there a tremendously long time. Um, I mean, maths is a very big subject and uh, everybody has their little specialities. And, and my speciality, broadly speaking, is in um, probability and um, statistics. Um, and I would also say that I'm interested in all of maths, really. I mean, it's such a huge subject. And about uh, two things I've been interested in over the years and have taught and done research in are designing experiments, which doesn't sound at all mathematical, but in fact <laughs> that it sounds is. too fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then that's a fascinating subject in itself. And also the other thing that I, I've taught is game theory, which um, sounds fun and I hope it is. Uh, has a, it does have some overlap with what we're going to be talking about today, but it's actually quite mathematical. Mm. Um, I'm also interested in, in maths education. Um, I run a course whereby students go and teach maths in local schools as part of their degree. And, um, and in my career, my long career, I've also done a lot with going in to give talks to schools and uh, interacting with schools in a number of different ways. And in particular, um, I think it's important that we encourage girls, women, whatever you want to call us, um, to do maths. Because you don't need brute strength to do maths. You just need a decent brain. And, and you know, we're quite good at that, really. So... Um, and this is particularly pertinent, of course, as it's Ada Lovelace Day, and she's a pioneer uh, and a woman in, in mathematics. So I think this is a, a very good day for Maeve and I to talk to you about maths and various puzzles and games. Over yeah. to you, Maeve. Maeve, Maeve is the boss, by the way. Maeve is the boss. <laughs> I'm the boss. <laughs> Although I would say, just for everyone um, out there, I don't know what kind of level of experience you've got in maths i want you to know that if you don't know loads about maths or you don't have a science degree you are represented here i am just interested <laughs> in maths but i do not have any formal training in maths so we're going to cover all ends of the spectrum so if you feel like it's just oh it's not, i don't know don't worry because i will need it to be broken down into the smallest little parts to be explained <laughs> uh so um oh i just want to remind you that uh, we've got we've got kind of the next like hour and twenty minutes now. Um, we are here for you. If you've got anything you want to ask us, uh, ask us in the chat. You can ask me things. You can ask Linda things. Uh, maybe you've got comments about stuff. Um, we just love to talk. So if you've got anything you want to say, or maybe you've had this maths puzzle in your brain for a while and you just really wanted to know the answer and you never got a chance, this is your chance. Maybe. <laughs> don't want to say I that. I guarantee you to answer all questions. <laughs> it's true. Um, Not me in so, there. <laughs> um, okay, and I'm also just going to make sure that I've just reminded everyone. So, uh, um, 
So the first puzzle, oh yes, ask us in the chat. I add that and put this up so that people who are just joining will know that they can ask us questions in the chat. Okay, so let us get started with our first um, game slash puzzle. So this was a request of mine. I wanted uh, Linda to talk us through this. I have my own Towers of Hanoi. You see, this is, um, this is a stock Google picture, and this is the actual thing. So I don't know if anyone's seen these kind of things before. Uh, at first glance, it's just like a child's toy. You might think, oh yes, I've seen three-year-olds play with that. But actually, it's a good little puzzle that keeps your brain working. So I'm gonna just take, I think I've got like, how many is that? I think I've got 10 things on here but you might more generally see it like that if you've got a little app or whatever. So I've got three little thingies here. And so the aim of the Towers of Hanoi, correct me if I'm wrong, Linda, I believe the aim is, uh, you can have a different number of pegs or whatever, but in this scenario, you want to get all of the discs from this one to this one. So I wanna go from this number one to this number three. Or, I can only yeah, move. Or, or number two, it doesn't really matter, but you're going to do it for number three, aren't you? Yeah. yeah, I think distance is good for me. So I want I want to move all these three over to here, but I can only move one disc at a time, and a smaller disc cannot have a larger disc on top of it. That's correct, right? So I couldn't, I couldn't do this. This is wrong. Can't do that. So there's a little bit of sort of logic behind that, isn't it? So I'm gonna start really small. <laughs> I'm just gonna have one. Is that good? I think I can do this, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you can uh, play this at home. I will put a link in the chat actually for this, the Towers of Hanoi. <laughs> of course, I've got like three computers open at the moment, by the way, that's what's happening. How do I do this? Oh yes, comments. Okay. So Towers of Hanoi, because then it's it's one of those things where you can, um, you know, you click on like like you might play Tetris online. Have a little look, and you can play this. You can play this along with us. I'm going to post this link now to you in the chat, so you can click onto it if you're not as lucky as me to have your own little Towers of Hanoi. Okay. So let's start small. So I posted the link in the chat. Hopefully you can all see it. See, so yeah, I posted the link. So I'm gonna try one. So I need to get this one to this one. That's pretty easy. I just lift it up and I put it over there. Yes? Well done, so Maeve. Could, thanks. So I could do that in one move. Now we try two. Okay, so I wanna get these two over. But if I put the if I put the little one on the last one first, then that's no good because I need this one to be on the bottom. So the smallest number of moves I could do it in, I need to put this in the middle. Then I move this one to the end. That's two. And this three. I couldn't have done that any faster or more efficiently, could I? No. Three moves. Is that right? Yeah. Great. Okay. So that was two. And now let's give it a bit more thought. So Linda, I'm gonna need you to step in and just talk me through this. And, oh, and I thought you could do it, Maeve. <laughs> I, I could give it a go. Yeah, give it a go. <laughs> okay, 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 you know what, I'll give it a go. Um, okay, so, right. So I definitely can't put this on the last one because nothing could go on top of it. So the first little one has got to go there. Then the next logical thing would be to put this here. And then I want uh, this to the end. This, how many moves is that? I don't know how many it should be in the end. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, oh, Tamara says needed two tries to finish it with seven moves. So you got seven, Tamara. Okay, oh, wait a minute, okay. So there should be seven. Seven is the minimum, yes. 
yeah. Oh, okay, so I can't do it in less than seven. That that makes yeah. me feel better. I was thinking, oh, maybe I've got to do it in like two. So I've got one, one. Put it on that one, yes. Yeah. Two. Mm -hmm. Three. Yeah. Four. Yes. Then you need to move. Five. I'm trying to get them on here. Yeah, you're so trying to get them on there, yes. Uh, well, I've got I've got them on the middle one, but I haven't got them on the end one where I wanted them. I think, I think the important thing is, I think in the original game when it was posed, is you have to get them on a different peg, so you've done that. Okay. Yeah. Well oh, done. we've got some people getting them in sevens. We've got Elenombre. Mm -hmm. Well done. And Ndinga Gardner, well done, seven. Okay, so yeah. oh, that's, that's, that's the smallest number you can do it, do it on, yes, yeah. Okay, so in theory, if you wanted to do 20 discs, how how long would that take you? How many moves? Oh, well, it would be, it's two to the power 20, which is absolutely enormous, minus one. So two for three, it's two cubed minus one, which is seven. That's the smallest number of moves. Um, but okay. um, you wouldn't want to sit down and and do that number of moves because you'd it, you know you wouldn't get any dinner or today or tomorrow oh. either because it takes too <laughs> long. Um, so, but you can see that um, it, it was easy to do one, relatively easy to do two, a bit trickier to do three. Yeah. Um, but Having done three, you can use that in order to do four. In other words, if you have n discs and you know how to do those, then it's quite easy to see how to do n plus one because you put, if you imagine your n plus one discs on, say, one of the pegs, um, and then you just take the top n, which you know how to deal with, so you can move those all in one go. You're not affected by the large... Uh, mm. bottom one at all you can just move all move them in one go it's not one Hanoi tires of Hanoi move but you know you can do it in a certain number of moves maybe quite a lot okay then mm. you can move the, the the bottom big disc onto the one remaining spike and then you can move the the original pile of n onto that spike all in one go because you know how to move n discs from one spike to another, to a different one. Right, so you're sort of building on this sort of little routine that you've got, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. So, for example, if you know how to do 11, you can do 12. Going back a bit further, if you know how to do three, you can do four. You know how to do four, you can do five, and it goes on ad infinitum. It, it, I mean, it would take a long time. It would take yeah. a long time. But um, it shows that it can be done, which is the important thing. Right. So the lesson in the lesson here on how many can you do is don't don't go from one to ten. You should build it up slowly, right? Steps of one, yeah. Yeah. If you want to practice it, do it in steps of one. Try make sure you can do three in a really slick fashion. And then yeah. you can do, <laughs> and, and then you'll find that you you can see how to do four using using what you know about three discs. Okay, well, if anyone wants to comment in the chat, you're all doing really well with, uh, you did it in seven moves, but if anyone is um, having a go at more than three discs, let us know how you're getting on yeah. um, throughout the course of this lovely hour and a half. Um, okay, so I think we've I think we've covered Towers of Hanoi, and I think I've just got a little comment at the bottom that says, try it yourself. Oh, wait, and, and so I've got a pen. I've accidentally been drawing on the on the slides sorry <laughs> how do i do this get rid of my pen give pen back <laughs> there we go have a go yourself <laughs> which everyone's already doing okay uh let's have a quick chat to linda um got no questions for you so far in the chat uh but but i've got a question for you ah yes well but it's more of a joint question so why did you first like follow math and what do you really like about it? What's one of your favorite things about math? Oh, what a big question. Yes, I mean, I've, I've been interested in math for a long, long time. I think I first decided that that was the thing I wanted to follow when I was about 12. 
and uh, I read a lot of what are called recreational maths books. In other words, they're not textbooks, they're sort of fun books about maths. I read a lot of those. While all my friends were reading romantic novels, I was busy reading maths books, which is really, really <laughs> sad. Really <laughs> sad. That is not sad but at all. It's Thank you. Subject. I mean, it's, I mean, it, I mean, people say that, that maths is really the study of patterns. And mm. in a sense, I think most people like patterns. You know, it gives you a sense of order and they can look nice and pretty and so on. And in a minute, we'll, we'll show you something which, which I think looks pretty. Um, in fact, we'll show you several things that look pretty. Yes, I have um, this. But it's, it's such a fascinating thing. And um, I think it's also it's it's a highly structured sort of subject you know you don't have to have opinions on anything you can it's just either right or wrong which is some people don't like that aspect of it but i i do you know i know i know where i am yes <laughs> we've just had a picture put up thank you Maeve. yes you're welcome oh, there's, there's a nice cup of tea on the left there for me <laughs> and you have to look at it very closely because you'll see if you look closely there's a sort of heart shape there um, and you can see it more clearly in the middle picture, which is a metal ring sitting on a table uh, with light shining on it. I mean, the light was shining on the cup of tea, but the cup of tea doesn't make it very easy to see the shape. And on the right is a mathematical representation of the same shape. And it's got a name. It's called a cardioid. So can you just put that, up, that name up for us on the chat, mate? It's C-A-R-D. I O I D cardioid, yeah. Say C A R D I C A R D card, like birthday card, card, card I O I D, yeah, yeah. Cardioid. Got it. Cardioid. Yeah. And a couple of things I'd like to say about it, really. One is that it's it's a nice pattern. They're they're nice patterns, and also maths crops up in everyday life, even in your cup of tea. And when you put put your ring down on the table and the light shining, um, you get these curves. And there are a lot of mathematical things for which mathematicians have equations. You know, you can write down an equation of this curve. You can draw it for yourself if you want to. If you um, just Google cardioid, there are lots of um, articles on the web about ways in which you can actually draw this sort of shape yourself. Um, so it, it's it's beautiful. Um, it's mathematical. Um, and it and it's you know it arises through everyday objects and mass infiltrates more or less everything in everyday life. It really does. I mean, if you're sad like me, then it probably infiltrates it a bit too much. But <laughs> um, you know, I think it's one of one of the appeals of maths that it's like that, and also that it it turns up surprising things. You know, I mean, I think you wouldn't really imagine that a cup of tea would actually you know give you something which has a rather complicated equation. You know, yeah, I've never noticed market. that. I don't know if anyone's got a cup of tea who's watching. Is that, cause, <laughs> is that so? That should just come up in every cup of tea. I mean, I'm drink. I've made myself a smoothie, well, so I don't have a. I don't have a. <laughs> yeah, I get a bit lost in the smoothie. I mean, I think <laughs> you have to have the light shining on it in in the correct direction. Mm. Um, I mean, it's it's a bit light, but not exactly the same as when you have a parabolic mirror. You know, a curved mirror like you have in a car headlight. Car headlight. Oh yeah, yeah. It has, it has a sort of curved surface. It's a three-dimensional thing, but it's basically, it's cross-section, is what's called a parabola. And when a, a beam of light, a parallel beam of light hits that light, it gets focused on one particular point, so you get a, it gets very bright. So that's that's why you have a lamp like that inside a car, and other lamps as well. Sometimes mm -hmm. lamps you have at home, they've got parabolic, um, parabolic um, mirrors in them which reflect the light and get, get it, make it very bright. So, and there are lots of things like that, lots of, you know, you can think about a curve that, uh, that are, um, you know, if, if I hold a piece of rope and, and, um, and Maeve holds the other end of the rope and we just let it flop so it forms a curve, well, that's a mathematical curve. Yeah. Um, and so you can put an equation to that as well. So there are lots of things that you actually see in everyday life which have got equations associated with them. We've got some nice comments right. here as we've got. Right. Um, <laughs> I can't see it the first time I've known. Well, you have to keep looking at uh, different cups of tea. You don't see, I mean, you don't really know. I don't notice it every time. Yeah, I mean, it does depend on the brightness of the light and the color of your, you know, the strength of your tea and things like that. But does it work with it. coffee? 
Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah nothing to do. <laughs> nothing to do. It's nothing to do with properties of tea. You tend oh, not to okay. see it in a glass of water because it just doesn't show up. But right. um, if you work with okay. coffee, it should with with coke or or anything. It's not yeah. that. It's it's the light, and you have to have it not too full the cup because the light has to sort of get reflected against the sides of the cup onto the okay. onto the mm -hmm. liquid. Yeah, yeah. If you have it too uh, also, too deep, then you won't get that happening. What are my favourite numbers? Uh, oh my goodness! Um, what are my favourite numbers? You have a favourite number. Not really. No, I find them all fascinating, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was one um, person who um, asked, what is what is the most important number in mathematics? What is it? What is what is, what is the most interesting number in mathematics? OK, or or anyway, what is the most interesting number in the world, if you like? And of course, there isn't one because if something was the most interesting number in the world, that would make it interesting, wouldn't it? So you've got a contradiction there. Oh, I can see you're thinking about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, All for me, because what's, what's um, your favorite? But my, my favorite number is 13. I really like the number 13. Well, I like 13 too because my birthday is on 13th for a particular month. So I'm Mine as happy well. So are we, are we twins? Not twins, but <laughs> <laughs> obviously you're 100 years younger than me, but um, my, oh, my birth is in August. It. What is yours, May, so I can send you a uh, card? No, I'm, I'm January. Ah, uh, yes, yes, not, not, but both, both the 13th, yes. Yeah. So I've always yeah, been amazing. quite happy. There is I'm something quite, the kin with the, with the number 13. Yeah, talking of birthdays, of course, leads me to another very nice mathematical question. Mm. Supposing you have a group of people in a room. This is in non-COVID times, I have to I have to add. You have a group of people in the room. How many do you have to have in that room? So it's more likely than not that two of them have got the same birthday, month and year. Uh, not, not the year, just the month and the, and the date. How many people do you need to have in the room? So it's more likely than not that there are two people in the room with the same birthday. Ooh. Okay. Just so give a guess. guess. Don't try and work it out in your head because it'd be very difficult to do that. But just guess. People at home might like to guess too. How many people you have to have them in a room? So it's more likely than not that there are two, at least two, at least one pair in the same room with the same birthday. Like I don't know, like eighth of June or the, I know twentieth of December. The year doesn't matter. It's, yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm just writing this in a little banner so we can put it all on the bottom. Yeah. Okay. You have to tell me if this is the right phrasing. How many people? How do many need people to, more likely than not, that there are two people who with uh, that two people will have the same birthday. Yeah. Now there might, vaguely... be more than, there might be more than one pair, but at least one pair of people who have the same birthday. Yeah. Do you want me to tell yes. the answer now? Um, uh, let's just leave it up there for a second, and we'll move on to our next uh, people guess. People ooh. can put a guess in the chat if they want to. People are, people are, are guessing. Uh, so we've got Kevin says 23. Fiona says 365. Now, this is what I – see, I would go with that. that. That's where my brain goes. No, that, that's, uh, I'm that's with you, not Fiona. It's not right, yeah. but that's where my brain goes. I know that <laughs> I don't know the answer, yeah. but I know that it's not that. Mm. Um, oh, we've got some more. Uh, Sarah, thirty. She says Elaine, hundred eighty-six. How'd you get to one hundred eighty-six? Because I know where three six five comes from. Because that's how many days there are yeah. in a year. It's um, just one more than half of yeah. Of, um, and then oh, we got oh, we got big numbers here from Vicky, seven hundred and thirty-one. That's, that's that's oh yeah you definitely, <laughs> yes. definitely oh um we don't want to know the answer yet no don't don't no, that's, okay that's cool. tell you just yet. We, we might tell you a bit later on yeah yeah we'll we'll tell you later um, no it's just quite surprising yeah and that's another thing that is is you know gives you surprises <laughs> which is always fun <laughs> okay let's see what i've got on the slides next oh yes yeah, so it's time for a puzzle so while you're puzzle. thinking about mm -hmm. Got loads of puzzles going on flying out of our ears so we've got the birthday one that's along the bottom there yeah. but this one is our coins problems do you want to explain this I mean, the coins problem yeah the coins so if everyone problem. i think has got like a pen and paper i think or they've got their thinking hats yeah. on 
Yeah, get your thinking hat on for this one. Imagine you've got a piece of paper with, um, there are a hundred coins on it, all spaced out so they don't overlap. And each of them has got diameter two centimeters. So they fit without overlapping onto the piece of paper above. So they don't go beyond the paper. They're all sitting on the paper there. Um, the question is, um, can you fit 400 coins, that's four times as many, each of diameter one centimeter, so a quarter the area, if you like, of the others, um, onto a piece of paper exactly the same size? So you keep the, the size of the piece of paper the same, but can you fit on 400 of the smaller coins onto it without overlapping? Okay, so the, the question is, can you do it? Is it possible to do that? Well, is actually, I, I, I would be fair with you. It is possible to do it. But so how do you do it, I suppose, is really the question. How do you okay. fit on 400 coins, so four times as many coins, but each of a quarter of the area, so the total area is the same, um, onto this piece of paper. It's exactly the same piece of size piece of paper as the one we've got originally. Yeah. Okay. This is baffling. Okay, so while people are having a think about that, do you, you want to talk through the birthday thing? Think, um, I think we're ready for the if, if you're not ready for the birthday solution, <laughs> I, I mean, you could. Um, oh, yes, I'll give. Yeah. <laughs> could, um, I will wait from this moment 50, no, 20 seconds because there's a delay on YouTube. I'll wait 20 seconds. No, 30 yeah. seconds. People can, um, if, can, if people don't want to know the answer to the birthday problem. Yeah. So we'll wait for that. Um, I'm just going to. These are really, you know, you can get these from like, for like four pounds from like just a kid. It's, it's a good, it's a good puzzle. It's a house of Hanoi. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to put them all back. I mean, yeah, if I tried to, it's the kind of thing I have on my desk at work. Of course, now I'm working for home so this is here sort of just reminds me of what kind of work that I do but yeah, this would take me a really long time to do wouldn't it oh it would yes <laughs> yeah. one two three four five six seven eight eight, eight. yes yes that Horrendous. would take you a long time yeah okay no one has complained about knowing the answer to the birthday problem so let's reveal the answer to that and then we will give the answer to the coins problem yeah, it's um, 23. Somebody did put that into the chat, but I think maybe, I don't know if they knew the results. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah. Catherine for 23. Well oh, done for 23. Yeah, Kevin well done. Kevin for 23. Well done. To put in 23. Um, it is a surprisingly small number. If you, um, and because people tend to think in terms of the 365 days in the year, um, yeah, but it's not that. I mean, the, the, obviously, the chances of somebody else of having exactly the same birthday as you is quite small. But you're making when you've got 23 people in the room, you've got quite a lot of comparisons. It's not just one pair of people you're looking at. You're looking at lots of pairs of people. And um, if you if you want to do the calculation yourself, if you're feeling really clever, you work out the probability that all the people have got different birthdays. I won't go into the technical details, but you can do that. And it turns out that you need to have uh, 23 people. So that, that's a sort of break even point where you've got slightly more than a half probability uh, chance um, of having a pair with the same birthday. Um, and if you go up to more people, if you have, say 70 people, it's almost certain that there'll be at least one pair with the same birthday. The, 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 it's it's very high probability um as you know probability okay. one represents certainty so for 70 people it's you know it's 0. 0.99 something or other so um for 23 amazing. Half. it is amazing I yes i think that you can find out your, find some list of birthdays i don't know famous footballers or pop stars or something um or just ask oh, some of your friends idea. They're not allowed in a room with their 22 other people, of course, you know, because it's the rule of six going on. But, oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, you can't have one six. <laughs> Do it online. Find out Very the birthdays of, of other people. And um, um, then you can see if there's a pair of the same birthday. You might find yourself having to send lots of birthday cards after this because you know, they <laughs> know that you have a birthday. <laughs> 
yeah. Where do we go next, Maeve? Where, what's what's the next treat? Um, the next step, because we've got quite a few puzzles still to go through, we'll um, yeah. we will do. Yeah. Let's do the answer to this this problem, and then we'll you know sure. we've got got loads more to go. Yeah, we have indeed. So yes. we had see. we've had one responsive yeah. sharing thoughts. Calculate, Calculate the, the mass. Square meter seventy, which is four hundred. It's it's four hundred for both, isn't it? Yes, but that doesn't tell you how you can fit four hundred of them onto the piece of paper of the original size. So uh, maybe we should explain how you do it. Um, I okay. mean, a, a lot a lot of people in in theory would like to get hold of four hundred coins and, and mess about with them, but you can't. You don't need yeah. to do that. It's a very quick answer. Very very quick answer. Um, and this is the beauty of maths, actually. If, if you're really clever, you can think of, um, you get solutions to problems which look really difficult. The problems look difficult, but if you're clever, you can think of a really, a really neat sort of answer. And this is one of those sorts of questions. So with this one, with the coins, mm -hmm. if you'd like to give me the answer, is you yes. take, um, you take, um, you draw four copies of the original diagram that I gave you and you place them um, in a two by two grid. And we'll give you a picture of that in a moment. Um, that will give you 400 coins because you've got four copies um, and they're arranged on a piece of paper, which of course is four times the size of the original. Now you just scale, you just scale it, rescale half the the length and the and the and the and the width of the rectangle and you've now got your 400 of the right size all on the a piece of paper the original size so if we could have the next slide Maeve I think that will become a lot clearer than me waffling yes. on about okay so we've got four versions of it <laughs> put like that we've got 400 coins now I hope nobody's counted all these coins I did I did count them but I might have oh. got it wrong it's, it's a, a lot yeah so so that um, uh, you've got 400 coins. The paper is too big by, um, by, by a ratio of two to one, both across and down, isn't it? So if you just rescale half the scale of the whole thing, um, you'll get that, you'll get what, you'll get 400 on a piece of paper, which is the same size as the original. Yeah, two squared, somebody's written two squared is four. One squared it so that the four would fit in the air. Yeah, the, yeah, they've both got both scenarios. You've got the same total area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you've got four. You have four times as many um, coins, but they're half the diameter. In other words, a quarter of the area. Exactly. I think someone's got the point there very well. Yeah. <laughs> so we've managed to do well that. Done. By, Tough mind. By doing this little trick. Yeah. Yay. Good. OK, what's up next? Oh yes, this is my moment to shine. Uh, so this, uh, the next thing that we're going to talk about is something that captured my attention, which is the game of Nim. And I think this is a great party trick. It's one of those things where, I mean, yes, we're not really allowed to go to party anymore, but when we, when we, when we are allowed, it's the kind of thing where you can grab some bits and pieces of what's around you and play a game so you don't need to buy anything or anything like that and if you play it right and make no mistakes you can win every time and that's my kind of game so i'm going to do my best to explain how it works um so this is what it is the game of nim that's what a setup looks like so you've got uh the traditional game of nim has four rows you've got one three five and seven of matchsticks traditionally or any object really so um i would i used to go around the office ask, challenging people to nim and doing it with paper clips so you can use anything you like really so you're it's a two-player game they take you take turns to remove any number of matchsticks from one row so you can only mess with one row but you can take as many matches as you like and at the end of the game the one who takes the last matchstick has lost. So you're sort of trying to get them to take the last matchstick. I was trying to do an exam. I was testing this out with one of my friends yesterday and I said a good example of um, a game that's a bit similar is, do you ever play that game, Linda, where you've, you've got to like count to 21 in either a pair or a group 
mm. and the person who says 21 is out. Uh, and you can say one, two, or three numbers at a time. So if we were playing oh, okay. it, I would Write say, yeah. I would say one, two, three, and then you can say five. So or do you, I say you, four? Yeah, if you, if you, you, but you can say up to three more numbers. Oh, I can say, oh, okay. So I'd say, say four, five, and six, yeah. Okay. Are we adding these up as we go along, are we? Do what? Are we adding them up as we go along? It's not no, that. we're not. No, no, we're not adding. So you've said four, five, six. Yes. Um, so I'm going to say seven, eight, nine. Um, 10, 11. 12, 13, 14. Um, 15, 16, 17. 18, 19, 20. And then I have to say 21. So I've, have I lost or have I won? You lost. <laughs> Oh, good, I got yeah. you to say the last number. It's probably yeah, going to be a high point of my gaming life. Yeah, you do. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yes, yes. You've got you've got to get get over the sort of the the eighteen, haven't you? I got eighteen. Yes. You have, yeah. You've got to get. Yeah. yeah. So, so that, you work backwards. Yeah. Yeah. I need that's, to practice. So that's sort of, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so the the thing with that game that um ah yes the someone says you've tried that game before and it's uh not very successful but the thing is that there's many no I wasn't successful either no there's there's <laughs> quite a few factors that out of, are out of your control because you're right Linda until you get to a certain point in the numbers you can't really mm. you can't affect the outcome and so with mm. Nim as long as so you much. always go second always go second mm. you will always mm. win you can make them, mm -hmm. your other person lose. So this is why I'm showing it to you. So if you're playing against the computer, you can win. Okay, so the winning strategy, so bear with me, the winning strategy is you want something called nim sum of the rows to remain zero. And when you are looking at your set of matchsticks, if at the end of your go, so you've taken a matchstick, there's nim sum of zero, then you are in a winning position. So you want to sort of hand the board over to the other person with a nim sum of zero. And I'll explain what that is, but that's sort of how you go. So how do you do this? So what, this is the way that I would, this is the way I do it in my brain. There's lots and lots of maths in this, but I can only get it to a certain level of complexity. So this to me is the idiot's guide to winning a game of NIM. So you convert each row into either a one, a two, or a four. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but it will. <clears throat> so I've got row one, row two, row three, and row four. Now I'm gonna sort of make, put them into uh, little brackets of things that I can match up together. Cause the idea is we wanna be able to cancel things out. So, and I'm probably using lots of math words incorrectly. Sorry, Linda. Um, That's probably right. <laughs> so we've got I think I've got a little laser pointer on my pen or something. Oh yeah, maybe I'll use my pen. No, I'll use my laser pointer. You see my laser pointer? There we go. So got row one, one matchstick. So I'm deciding that that is one times one, which equals one matchstick. Row two, I've got three matchsticks. So I'm going to divide it into one times one because I like things that are the same and one times two, and that all makes three. Then row three, I'm gonna do another one times one, and I've got four, so I'm gonna do one times four instead of doing more one times two, one times two, because I want it to be concise. And then in row four, I've got a one times four, these four, I've got a one times two, and a one times one, which is seven. So that's the one, three, five, seven sort of setup. But, um, I'm gonna simplify that. So that's just me doing my thinking. So this becomes one. So this is me converting each row into either one, twos or fours. The first one is one. The next row is two. So it's one times two and one times one. So this is two and a one. This is a four and a one. And this is a four, two and a one. So it all amounts to the amount that's in the row, but we're putting it in nim terms. So what you wanna do is cancel the pairs. So the reason I wouldn't want to go first in this game is because it's already it's already a winning hand. And I'll show you. So I've got a pen now. So what I want to do is cancel them. 
So, okay, I want to cancel this one. I want to make sure everyone's got a match. So one there, and there's a one here. Yay. Um, oh, I've got another one here and a one here. And we've got a two and a two and a four and a four. So this is dim sum zero. That's what that means. We want it to all cancel out. So that means that if this is the way the board is at the end of my go, that's great. The problem is that this is the starting board. So that's why you never want to go first because you're starting from the perfect, you know, it's the perfect thing. You don't want to touch it. So yes, always make sure the computer goes first. But yeah, you have to slip up. So I've done a little example of a game to give you an idea because it's sort of best in practice. And I will actually post you a link to the game of NIM. You can do it online. It's really handy. Let me just send this. I'll post this to you now so you can kind of play along with me. Ooh, so many different things. Okay, I'm posting it in the chat. There. Okay, so with this imaginary version, I have got, I've just put, put this one times one over here so I can sort of see it easier. But in this situation, the computer is going first. So the computer's gone first and the computer has taken this one. Do you see that? So there was one here and it's gone now. So the computer took that away. Now it's my go. So the NIM sum has changed. So I've still got my one, fine. But now I'm missing one from this row. So I don't have this one anymore. It doesn't exist. So that's gonna mess up my, my pairs, isn't it? So I need to correct the balance and make sure that everything's got a pair again. So, I've got these, these ones have got a pair, yay. <clears throat> these fours are fine, these twos are fine. So this one is bothering me. So I'm gonna take that one away. So that was my go, I took that one. It's gone now. So now I have some nice zero nim sum. And then it's the computer's go. The computer has decided to take Ooh, five matchsticks from the bottom here. But they've just taken it from there. So now let's have a look. So I've got two here. I've got four and one here. And, oh, I'm severely depleted here. So I've lost my four. I've got two left, so I've got two. Okay. So can you see now that I've got two and two? That They cancel. Great. But four and one, are they don't have any pairs. So what I would probably do in this situation is take this entire row out, take the whole row, because they don't have any pairs. It's still zero nim sum. Remember that I want the computer to pick the last matchstick. So now it's their go, and they've taken those two away. But I'm always going to win, you see, because all I have to do is take one matchstick away, and that leaves them with the final matchstick. And that's how you win. But by following this nim sum uh, thing, you can ensure that you're always going to a win. So there's more control than in that game earlier where you're counting to 21. Great, that was that. <laughs> so please have a go. Uh, have, have a go at home, yes. Have a go, at, um, I've posted the link. I find it really fun, it's very satisfying. And also on that website, Archimedes Lab, dot org there is an explanation there's a few different ways of explaining nim that you can just have a look at and maybe there's ways that make more sense to you this is sort of how my brain works so my mm, yeah, there, there are quite a lot of websites which give you solutions to the game you have to be a bit careful because in some versions of the game it's the person who takes the last matchstick who's the winner mm. and that's that's, that's called the normal form. The one that we've been looking at today is called the misere form of the game. So just when you read what's written about it, you need to make sure that you know which version that they're talking about. Yeah. Mm. Ooh, question for Linda. Why is it not cool for women to like and be good at math? This stuff is astounding. There are so many life use. Ah, yes. Now, that's a very, very interesting question. I was going to talk about that, really. Um, yeah. I mean, I was lucky because I went to an all-girls school at sort of secondary level. And so the, the question of whether maths was 
a call for women or not didn't arise. I mean, there was nobody to, I mean, there weren't any 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 boys in my school to lord it over us. Um, but I don't know. I don't know why it is. I, I, it's a puzzle to me because maths to me is cool. It's because it doesn't, as I said earlier, it doesn't require sort of brute strength or anything. It's just pure sort of brain power. Um, but it's it's historical. I think it's. I think a lot of people find maths difficult. I do appreciate that, um, and I think that gets passed down the generations. But why? I don't know. It's it's something I don't know whether it's women don't have the confidence to do it, um, whether they you know tell their children, "Oh, I couldn't do maths either at school. Don't worry," sort of thing. I, they would probably say that. that just as much to their sons. So I, it, it sort of puzzles me, really. There are some countries where there are a lot more female mathematicians than male ones. For example, in Italy, most mathematicians are female. So it's it's definitely something to do with the culture. Um, but it is, it is very strange, really. And, and I, I find it difficult to answer because I'm a mathematician and I have an absolute passion for maths. You know, I always mm. have done. So... You know, I think maybe you need to ask somebody who isn't so involved, if you like, with maths mm. to answer that question. Um, because when I, I went to a very academic girls' school and and to be good at maths was considered a, a good thing, you know. But I can imagine in some schools, it would, to be good at maths, you'd be regarded as a bit sad, you know. <laughs> Wouldn't be cool at all, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very odd. Have you got anything to say about that, uh, Maeve? Um, I mean, it's interesting that I, I also went to a all-girls secondary school. Um, and I think that, yeah, there might be something in that where you, it's not, it doesn't matter if it's cool or not when, I don't know, I think, yeah, with maybe it's a same-sex school thing because uh, I absolutely loved maths. Uh, my sisters both loved maths, are good or great at it. My mum is great at maths. So maybe it's to do with the people around you to be encouraged mm. in a certain way. But for me, it was always cool, but I didn't care really very much about what people thought about me. I wasn't like, I wasn't one of the people who was like horrendously bullied, but I also wasn't popular either. I was sort of safe in the middle. I sort of did did my thing and I was like this is kind of awesome <laughs> and people would maybe just leave me alone so I think that it, yeah I think it's really really difficult to it, it depends so much on um the people around you either at home or at school or mm. you know who your friends are who your role models are and so I guess that's why something you know having Ada Lovelace day and in this case Ada Lovelace week is mm. great because it's it's showcasing the you know um role models for women who mm. you know it, it's about their brains and not about their mm. bums i don't know <laughs> um, I, think, I think things have improved over the years there are more women in maths and there are people on television like hannah fry and, and, and others who, who talk about maths um and there are more women i mean when I first started teaching maths, um, there were very few women doing so in, in the maths department. I'm in one point, I was the only woman out of about 60 members of staff uh, teaching. Maths. And now we've probably got about, we've got more people, we've probably got about 80 people, but we've probably got about 10 or 12 female lecturers uh, doing the same job as me. So. Um, oh, someone has written, Ina has written, I think it's a generation thing. I love maths, but my three girls aren't good at it. And don't think it's cool. <laughs> and, don't, and they don't think it's cool. But I wonder, yeah, you loved it. So presumably, Ina, you encourage your three girls to, to do maths. Maybe it skips a generation, you know, like twins. <laughs> <laughs> and And also, sometimes you don't, you're actually less interested in the thing that your, your, parents. your parents are interested in, or like, yeah. or say your siblings. So, yes, you yes. know what I mean? You go, well, they, I want to make my own thing. I don't, yeah. I don't need to be good at maths because you're good at maths. So I'm going to go and be awesome yeah, yeah. at art. Or, that's, that's, 
Yeah, that's a very interesting comment because I've got a daughter, two daughters. One's a mathematician, the older one's a mathematician, and the younger <laughs> one's gone in the other direction. She she did classics and, and German at university, you know. Ah. So, um, it, it 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 could be because sometimes you don't want to be the same as your parents, do you? You know, I mean, mm. um, as you, as you get older, you you won't have got to this stage yet, mate. But you sort of worry that you begin to look and behave like your like your mother. You know, you don't. <laughs> I would be de delighted to be anything <laughs> like my mother. She is an incredible human. Um, so that is just wonderful. But, I know, I, but you do see it in, in I'm joking, yeah, I'm joking, yeah. TV shows are like, oh my God, you're becoming just like your mother. And it's considered an insult, but it's never been an insult to me. Um, oh, let's do a little bit of crafting. Uh, just because we keep chatting and we're going to, yeah, I mean, we still get through all the puzzles. That's also fine. So this one, uh, just while we're also chatting, we're going to make some Mobius loops. I um, don't know if anyone has made Mobius loops before. Um, I did once, and I've forgotten. So let me... Oh, I was meant to show this earlier. A bit later, we'll be making our own Mobius loop. Oh, OK, doing a bit later, OK. Well, we'll do it now. Yeah, do you want to do it now? Yeah. Yes, I'd like to do um... it now. Even if you haven't got your piece, a piece of paper and glue and scissors handy, you, it's it's fairly simple, so you can probably remember what you do. I'm going to try and sort of demonstrate to you um, how you make a Mobius loop. It's very very simple. Am I going to try and do, do it with you? So I yeah, need okay. so you what need a bit strip of paper. My my strip of paper is it's it's, um, it's about a, a foot long and about an inch and a half, two inches wide. Okay. So I'm just going to take. I'm just going to take a little bit from the end of my A4 paper. Yes, of yes this was taken from this was taken from A4 paper actually. Cool. So yeah, yeah. this is my. You can see the scrap paper. Right. Yes. Scrap very yeah. important. Um, yeah. Okay, let me just do that. Now, if you take what you can do, of course, which is very interesting, is just to Making put the two, bigger, by two, the way. two ends together. Don't do anything. Don't do anything with that. That gives you a cylinder, doesn't it? Feeling that. What you do? Oh yes, yeah. it's like a cost, isn't it? Like, yeah. What you do instead? Instead of gluing these two pieces together like that, you give this one a hundred and eighty degree twist, and then stick it together. Mm. So I'll show you that again. You have your okay. piece of paper. I'm gonna do it with you. That would give you the cylinder, which when I mean cylinders are fascinating in their own right, but not today. You give this one a hundred and eighty degree twist, and then stick those two together, like that. Okay. Okay, so I've got this is my cylinder, so I don't want that. No, you just, just give it a hundred and ten degree. This bit. Turn it round. Turn like it that? Round. Now, yes, and now stick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, okay. So, so I've got I don't have glue, I've got masking tape. I don't yeah. know what anyone else has got. I've got some some glue. And these these are a couple I made earlier actually. They should they should end up looking <laughs> look, looking like this. You get it further away and you can see it better. They should end up looking like that. Yes. You know what I really wanted to do for the yeah. What I really wanted to do for the for the bar at the the maths bar at the festival was have yes. Mobius loop uh, bunting or like you oh, know how, with, you know, with yes. like paper chains and stuff. But I couldn't yeah. get I couldn't get the staff together to make. <laughs> well, I'll make some for you. <laughs> Yay! Next time we'll just yeah, yeah. different colours. We could do it with lots of different colours. Yeah. Um, these 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 are the same. These are both Mobius bands. Okay. There's a lot of mathematics involved here. Um, yeah. Yeah, these kind of blow my mind, Mobius loops. Yes. Okay, so I think mine's, I think I've got it right. You've got yours. Yeah, they look I think so. Looks fine, yes. And and I, wish could, I wish people could share people's photos on um, YouTube because I'd love to see how everyone's getting on, but I'm afraid that it doesn't work like that. No. But this is how we're doing it. You can make these very easily at home. Um, and, and you can do things with them, and we're going to do things with them, aren't we, Nave? Yes. So yours. I can do a cool thing where I'm going to take, well, let's take a obvious piece of paper. So take a pen, any pen. I'm choosing red because then you can see it. If you put your, if you start on any point at all on this loop, I bet you a million pounds <laughs> that you can, you can, you're, you can draw a line round on the ho on both sides of paper without taking your pen off the paper at all. Yeah. So, 
So if you were doing a cylinder, if you're doing a cylinder, you just get you just be doing you would only be able to do one side at a yeah. time. Amazing yeah. this is it's like it it like crosses another dimension. You do, you like so I don't know if I can do it like this. So I'm I'm picking it. Have two, two surfaces like an ordinary piece of paper would have. Yeah. It's like it, it doesn't just, have but it's still it's one, one. But it's I'm one drawing a wiggly line here. One I'm drawing the line. Line. Doing it to me. Okay, yeah, sorry. I got I'm just getting right, okay. So I'm gonna start here. And I'm not taking my pen off the loop. Okay, I'm gonna do it down here because I'm not doing very well. So I'm just drawing, 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 drawing. Oh, I'm going. Are you back to the beginning yet? Well, I've drawn on both sides of the paper. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. It's how how does that even work? Why is that? Why is it? Um, yeah. Why is it? Well, it's, it's because it's because of obviously the the twist that you gave the paper, so that basically that takes you onto the other side of the sheet. If you had one side of the paper blue and one side of the paper red when you started, you could see what was going on. Yeah, yeah, I got mine too. You did it? Oh, yeah. I just blows my mind. Yeah, get around. Yeah, you get back to the beginning. Yeah. So this is a, a sort of an object which has just basically got one side to it. Okay. Um, and, and Shall I do my trick now? Yes, you do yours because I'm going to draw along the line I've drawn. I'm going to I'm going to cut along that line, and you might like to just think about what's going to result when I do that. It's quite oh, difficult. Yeah, yeah. So if you, so, if you cut, yeah. So if you cut it, I'm trying to imagine. Yeah. Mm. It is quite you difficult. Get, to imagine, yeah. Get, you get two. You get two Mobius loops. Well, shall we see? Shall we see what happens? Yeah, all right, go on then. The, the good way to find out is to actually do it. So I'm going to take, I, I, I've got my, my. Um, let me just show it to you. I've got my Mobius band. Yes. And I'm just going to cut along the line that I've drawn down the middle of the strip. And we'll see what happens. So I've got to get into it first of all, which means poking it with the scissors and probably losing a yeah. finger on the way. Oh, that's so, like when you're trying to cut a hole in a hole yeah. in something. Yeah, I like, know. <laughs> <laughs> This is only paper, isn't it? I've done it now. Uh, I'm cutting through along this line. Da, 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 da. Oh, and I'll come back to the beginning. And what have I got? I've got something which has got, well, yeah, it's certainly got more than one twist in it, I think. I think it's got two twists in it, hasn't it? Oh, wow. I'm going to make sure. it a bit bigger so you can see. Anyway, but what I'm going to do next is even more amazing, I think. I'm going to do the same thing again. So I've got this rather, if you like, uh, Mobius loop, which is slightly of, of, of less width. It's it's narrower than the other one. I'm going to cut. I'm going to cut again down the middle, and we'll see what happens. Because this is this is um, quite amazing. So I'm just cutting down the middle here. Just trying to keep keep me in the picture all the way along here. Yeah. It takes a bit longer because there's a bit more cutting to do. Yeah. Oh, uh, here we go. It's got quite curly, actually, so it's quite tricky. Oh, thing. God. <laughs> <laughs> right. So curly. Let's move it around a bit. Let's move it. I'm nearly there. I'm nearly there. Doing a great job, Linda. Good work. Right. Now, now what do we... Oh, my goodness. Whoa. My goodness. <laughs> This is this is what I've got now. Okay, now I defy you to <laughs> say what this is. That's so bizarre. And, and then you can do it. I mean, you can do it again. I won't do it now, but you can try it at home as long as your original piece of paper is sufficiently yeah. wide. You can do it, you know, lots and lots of times, and you come up with these um, these things which have got incredible mathematical properties, and uh, they're part of a subject called topology. I don't know if anyone's heard of topology. But it's all to do with shapes. It's not so much to do with sort of distances and angles. It's more to do with the relationship between objects, surfaces, and so on. Um, and there's also a branch of maths called knot theory, um, K N O three, K N O T. Um, it's uh, a very um, big branch of mathematics, which um, a lot of people who are interested in knot theory are interested in things like the way that DNA is coiled 
in the in the human body. Um, so there, there are mathematicians working on that sort of thing. The the way that DNA coils inside the cell. Yeah. The first thing that came to my mind when you said not theory was like not as in not N a theory. Not, yeah, not, not a theory. Yes, like when, yeah. when people, when people yeah. say sorry, not sorry. It's like I like theory, not theory. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think um, mathematicians study things with all sorts of sort of strange names and things. Um, pretty, I've got a question. Think, what are yes. the practical uses of Mobius strips? Um, I don't know how to answer that really. I've never, I mean, you, you have to Google it, I think. <laughs> I just, I mean, they keep me happy. They keep me happy. Um, <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it's fun. I mean, you could, I mean, try an experiment because you could try cutting this again. Um, you could try putting two twists in originally and seeing if you get something different. Um, um, you can try all sorts of different things um and you, and you get these things but i mean real mathematicians you know uh, they look at these things i mean these these are these are three dimensional objects i'm showing you here but real mathematicians do things in sort of lots and lots and lots of dimensions you know i mean sometimes just general n n dimensions um but sometimes people particularly if they're working with physicists will look at things in 11 dimensions or i don't know 30 or 40 dimensions and some really clever people can actually think in that number of dimensions. I can't. I can, three is about my limit <laughs> when you're oh, talking goodness. about dimensions. <laughs> um, I can understand sort of theoretically what a four-dimensional space is because I can write down equations for it, but I can't. I can't sort of actually. Yeah. Exist. Although often people say time is the fourth dimension. Of course, I mean physicists tend to to look upon time as the fourth dimension. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, like, those are Mobius bands. So have fun with those. Just experiment. Yeah. And um, experiment with, with trying to find a piece of paper which is say red on one side and blue on the other, and see what happens. What oh, happens yeah. to the red? And what happens to the blue? Yeah. That's a good point. Uh, while I'm getting up the next bit, uh, the next uh, slide, we just had another question from Sangeeta. Where do they? Oh, oh I, have, I have somebody oh. here who's just googled um, the use of Mobius bands. There um, you go. To, to do with things like ribbons and in a typewriter you have a ribbon and getting it twisted I don't know is it something like that yeah. yes ah. it makes it last longer apparently if you have it yeah I suppose it's on a loop something like that or something that's on a loop if you, you because because you can use both sides without having to change change it over oh that's clever yeah. You so, so there's less. Um, yeah. Apparently, BBC recording tapes are like that. Yes. Yeah. If you double the playing time, the computer prints oh. the cartridge. <laughs> <laughs> saying, yes. Yeah. I, I didn't know all that. That's great. I've learned something oh, new. Wow. Yeah. That's Fantastic. really smart because yeah. it's like, you know, you've got um, you could have a machine that changes it for you, or you could just have something that is that does it sort of changes itself. <laughs> Like a Mobius suit, that's really clever. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's changing itself, isn't it? Yes, yes, because you can use. Um, where do they occur naturally in nature? Um, I don't know. Probably to ask a biologist that. Can... I think that's. Um... Yes, yes. I mean, I. There might be some kind of plant or something like that 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 sort of has. I mean, plants are amazing things mathematically because if you look at a plant. A lot of flowers have got, I mean, there are so many different kinds of flowers for a start, but they've, a lot of them have got very interesting shapes. I mean, you know, as a mathematician, I'm interested in the shapes of things. And, and I mean, if I, if I look at something like that in nature, I'd think, well, what sort of equation is that? Most people don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, I mean, a lot of um, what we've seen earlier on with a cup of tea and, and the cardioid, that a lot of mathematical shapes which have equations do actually occur in real life, but I mean, I don't about nature. Yeah, I'm trying to, I think. Have to think about that one. Yes, it's puzzle time, guys. It's puzzle time because we're, oh, yeah, we're yes. racing. We've uh, got twenty minutes left, so uh, you know, any more questions? Keep them coming. Um, and yeah, we'll, we'll throw you another puzzle. I'm going to take away these things that say things yeah, I've already done. Yeah, let's have a puzzle. Yeah. I feel like a puzzle. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
So this one, oh, this, this is the chess domino problem. Yes. I like this one. Okay. <laughs> right. right. You uh, go, Linda. What, what do we need? Well, we've got it here ready. You've got us a chessboard here, um, an ordinary chessboard. And just suppose, and you'll see why in a minute, you remove two diagonally opposite corner squares. And, and Maeve has very helpfully put a red cross in each of the ones we're going to remove. You're welcome. So, a normal chessboard has altogether 64 squares, but we've taken two away. So that leaves 62. And I'm asking you the following question. Can you tile the remaining board without overlaps, without going over the edge of the board or anything like that, with 31 dominoes? Where So each domino, of course, occupies two squares, doesn't it? So each domino, the size of each domino is like two adjacent squares of a chessboard. That size. Um, so can you tile the remaining board with 31? That's half of the 62. Um, each domino has to occupy two squares. Can you tile it? In other words, make it all fit like a jigsaw on that chessboard with 31 dominoes, each of which occupies two squares. Can that be done? Ah, yes, that's one, one for the brain. Have a think about that, because this stumped me a little bit. Uh, <laughs> a little bit, a lot. <laughs> uh, and um, I still didn't believe Linda when she explained it to me. So uh, give you give you a few minutes to have a have a think about that. Um, it, Maeve and I have had some very interesting discussions about some of these questions. <laughs> yes, we have. And it's also interesting. Interesting thing. Um, actually, just off there's a, there's a comment that's been made in the in the chat that uh, said um, that as a non maths person. They were a bit scared to come to the talk, but it's been brilliant, oh, and that's and that's really really nice. And I and I mm. and um I think that that's it's really you know it's really important that even if you you don't know you don't understand, there's little little steps you can take. And you can still enjoy things. So mm. when when me and Linda were, were were starting to put ideas together for what puzzles to show you, um, Linda would. <laughs> do a puzzle for me and I would just go I don't get it I don't understand. <laughs> and um and so that's why it's it's been good as well to collaborate because then I can say oh I think we need to explain that a little bit more for people who aren't they don't have that level mm. of knowledge you know I'm like exhibit a mm -hmm. um like no science degree maths degree whatever mm. um but I think that you can still enjoy oh, yes you know things yes. and 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 also um what I hope people would also take away from this is that there's maths in things that you didn't think there were. So a bit like with this thing, mm. you know, yeah. you can, yeah. it's something that's, you know, yes, it, it's, you kind of go, it's, you can, I suppose it's maths, but it's kind of, yeah. there's, there's more to it mm. than that. And you can kind of appreciate things on another, another level. Mm. Oh, things are starting to roll in from the YouTube chats. So, Anne yes, can do right. 30. Yeah. Can only do 30. Kevin, Kevin says not it's not possible. possible. Kevin knows all the answers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Who is this Kevin? Not, yeah, yeah, you're right. But, but um, I mean, we'll explain in a moment why you can't do it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see if anyone else, anyone else comes up. Um, but for, uh, to talk a bit more about um, putting this together, for you all mm. it was a it was a it was a almost like a oh what's that thing it's all you know you know when you're not that you've met like a celebrity or i'm not explaining <laughs> this very well at all what i mean is i'll often come across something and i go that's so fascinating oh my god I, I don't quite understand that and then what happened was i met linda and she can just explain things to me and it's brilliant you're like an inter like and and when we were creating the presentation I had like a wish list of stuff that I wanted to understand and it's just awesome to be able to ask someone <laughs> something that that I can't quite figure out but I have a really mm -hmm. like I need to know you feel there's something interesting in there that's right yeah and yeah. I think all these things are fun I mean you know I think um that's why I like maths because it is fun and you, you see patterns about things and different ways of looking at things and different ways of using your brain to solve different problems. Mm. Um, I think that's, that's the interesting thing. There are, there are a lot of surprises around the corner in maths and different ways of, of solving things. 
Um, and it's, I mean, if you like solving puzzles, any kind of puzzles, then then maths, in a way, is something that should interest you because it's it's full of puzzles, really. Mm. A lot of, there are loads and loads of interesting puzzles around. You can look on the internet. There are books of puzzles, and um, and it's just it's just fun. Yeah, we all, we all have our. Oh, try drawing the dominoes on the chest. I've got two squares left over. Are oh, I? Yes, yes. That's that's quite understandable. Yes, Tamara. <laughs> yes, you're like me. <laughs> shall I we, shall we tell the answer to this one now? Because um, yes, yeah. let's get the answer. So we've yeah. had uh, yeah. no. We've had a. 30. 30, yes, 30, yes, yes. They've, I think they've got it really. But let's let's explain why you can only get 30. Um, okay. Fill up a lot of, of 62. Um, well, the, the thing is, each domino, cover, well, when you take away the two um, opposite white uh, squares, like we did, the ones with the red cross in them. Um, <laughs> You put them put them back in. So we've got rid go. of two two white squares. I mean, normally on a chessboard there are thirty two black and thirty two white, but we've we're only left with um, we're only left with thirty white, okay, and thirty two black. They stay, um, but each domino has to occupy one black square and one white square. So you can't do it. The, the, what you're going to have is going to happen at the end. You're going to have um, a couple of black squares over. Yeah. Now, no, Maeve is going to show you how she thought she could do it. Because when I first asked her, puzzle, she said, yeah, I can do that. You know, bit like that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I sat there and I said, I, no, I, I, Linda, I think you're wrong. I said, I think <laughs> I think I'm I'm right in this situation. And I can fill this because I was in my head. I was like snaking around the dominoes. And then I had to actually draw it out. So this might help those of you who are a bit of a visual learner like me. So I was like, yeah, I can do this. And it wasn't until I got about two from the end that I went, oh, yeah, you're right, Linda. I can't do it. <laughs> so we <laughs> domino, domino. And then we're snaking up. You see? Snaking up on the right-hand side. Domino, still good. Domino, domino. Snaking up the left-hand side. Domino, domino, domino. Snaking. Oh, it's all looking very good. Everything's going really smoothly. Yeah. So many fit. Oh no! And then I've seen now that you're not going to be able to do it. I can't you? do it. This was at the point where I said, "Oh, sorry, Linda, I didn't mean to not believe you." And then, I, and then you can do this. This maybe three white ones, and so it's not going to work. So you've got which some people have discovered. So well, I mean, it's good. Well done to those who discovered this. Mm. But you ended up with two extra blacks. Um, there are quite a lot of math prop puzzles like this where you have to prove that you can't do something. And so it's actually it's quite a good exercise for the brain to prove that, that it's something you can't do. Um, oh, yeah. so is there like a there you can have puzzles where you have to prove that you can and then pro and puzzles that where you prove, prove that you can. can. It's kind of an interesting like negative. Yeah, so, I don't know. Yeah, the first thing where you have to prove that you can do something, you do it by showing how, you know, or some other method, um, some kind of, of proof. Um, but things yeah. where you have to prove that something doesn't happen is um, is, is sometimes harder. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. I mean, supposing somebody said to you, here's a haystack, um, you know, prove to me that there's no needle in the haystack. Well, mm. that would take you a heck of a long time to prove. Yes. Whereas if there is a needle in the haystack and you can pick it out and show it to somebody, you know, you know, I've proved there's a needle in the haystack. You know. mm. Somebody else, yeah. if the needle mm -hmm. had uh, two diagonally opposite squares. Yeah, it's not always the same two squares left over, but you know, whatever your tactics are, you will always end up with two, dia two, two squares, which are left, two black squares, which are left over. Yeah, mm. so it's, you know, it's... Um, when I ask you, can you do this? Some people will try and do it um, and, and get stuck. And then some people realize that it can't be done. But in more complicated problems, you don't know which of those two lines to attack. You know, you don't know whether mm. to actually look, look hard for something uh, and then you might not find it or to prove that you can't find it. Yeah. So That's interesting. That's just a bit like doing detective work, to be quite honest. Yeah. To lead you to, yeah. It's good fun. So we have about <laughs> 10 minutes left. What should we do? Now? Well, because we've got a few things on the list. 
Mm. Uh, I mean, we've just got so many awesome things to show people, but we can probably only pick. Uh, hmm. Not many. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can show. Oh, I'd like to show um, Sapinski's triangle because you've got oh, really yes. nice. Um, yes, so I'm going to yeah. I'm going to move us on. So we've skipped a couple of puzzles, everyone. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah. It's just because there's so much to get through. Um, but this is something that I think is like a really, it's really cool. So. Let's see what happens here. Nave's going to put up the first slide, I think. Yeah, yeah. and that doesn't look frightfully interesting, does it? Um, that's a black equilateral triangle. <laughs> <We're gonna laughs> and that's it. It's great. <laughs> it, it is lovely. It's beautiful. It has symmetries. Um, but let's see what happens on the next slide. Maybe see what we've done. We've taken out a chunk, a, a, an equiangular triangular um, chunk out of the middle. So the, the the white triangle in the middle is also equilateral. It's sort of pointing downwards now, isn't it? Um, and we've and it's white. And the surrounding three black triangles are black. Surprise, surprise. Now what we're going to do: take each of those black triangles, each of those little ones, and do to it what we did to the original big black triangle, and that will give us the next page. You get that, okay? So here we have, you can see the original big black triangle. You can see the, the, the white chunk we took out of the middle, and you can see three tinier chunks, which are the middles of the, black, the three little black triangles that we produced last time. Let's keep going, because we now, okay. you see, we've got, we've got nine little black triangles. Okay, we've done about another. Can we go any further? Is there another one we can do? Yeah. And, I've, and I can do you one further as well. Oh, yes, please. Yes, please. Yes. It's yeah. a little. And of course, they've all got the same sort of pattern, haven't they? Um, you'll notice that. So every little bit of it is a bit like the whole, the whole thing with the original big uh, white triangle taken out of it. And you can go on doing this indefinitely, um, pr providing that obviously you've got a sort of small enough font or whatever it is on your, on your screen. Um, and you get a sort of lacy sort of pattern. And um, one of the things I'd like to show you is uh, I've got a necklace, actually, which is like, which is like, like this. It's got a Sapinski triangle. I think you can so see nice. Yeah. I have to keep remembering. Yes, there you go. You're good, yeah. Okay. <laughs> So you can, that, that's a bit like the, the bit there I've got my middle finger is where the, the first triangle was, extra triangle was drawn. The whole thing is triangular. Yeah, but yeah you, would, you wouldn't want to have uh, an infinite uh, number of triangles. No, around it, your neck, it, would, it would weigh me down too much. <laughs> Very good. So back to, to, to the slide. Okay. <clears throat> Um, it's what's called a self-similar figure, and that, you know, every, and a little bit of it is very much like any other little bit of it. It's a bit like um, I don't know if any of you eat broccoli. It's very good for you. We eat a lot of broccoli, but um, if you take a broccoli, um, and it's usually sort of about sort of that sort of size, and you take off a sort of sprig of it, uh, then what you have that sprig looks like another bunch of broccoli. And then if you take off a little bit of that sprig, you get a sort of mini sprig, which will also look like a bunch of broccoli. This is the sort of thing here. And it's the sort of thing which occurs a lot um, in nature. Um, some plants are like that. Um, so you, you get this rather beautiful pattern. Um, and it, you can produce this pattern in lots and lots of different ways. And there's another way we can produce it. And I don't know if maybe we can go to Pascal's triangle and I'll show yes. you on that, yes. Yeah, we can. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some of you may have heard of Pascal's triangle. You start at the very top of the, of the triangle with a number one. Down the left-hand edge are all ones and the right-hand edge are all ones. But after that, every number is the sum of the two numbers to the top left of it and the top right of it, immediately top left and immediately top right. So if we look, you see a two there, don't you, which is fairly near the top, if, if Maeve can just highlight, that two is the sum of the two ones which are to the top left and the top right of it, okay? And, and, and so it goes on down. So you can see how you get some of the other numbers. If we go right down to the bottom and um, see the middle one in the bottom line, which is 924. That's the sum of 
the two above it, two lots of 462. The whole thing is symmetric about the center, so as you can probably imagine. Um, and um, it has enormous properties, this triangle. I mean, I could you know, spend the whole hour and a half talking about the properties of Pascal's triangle. But one property is this. And it links in with Sapinski's triangle. Look at all the ones that I've painted yellow. They're all the even numbers. So I've painted all the even numbers yellow and I've left all the others unpainted. Now, stand back from it a bit and you will see if you go on doing this indefinitely. I can't do it indefinitely. I haven't got any more room on the slide. <laughs> and I keep doing it, going down and down and down. You would see um you would see Sipinski's triangle coming out of this you can sort of see a bit of a triangle near the top see that two at the very top forget about that go down two lines further down to the four six four this. yeah and then there's a triangle there isn't there there's a sort of triangle if you, if you stand far enough away from it and then um below that if you go to the line starting with um eight Go down that eight there. Look at that row there. That and then the triangle that's, well, I haven't quite finished the triangle, but it's beginning to form a triangle. If I were to carry on going down and putting more numbers in, I would get a yellow triangle there. Yeah, you definitely would. You get a yellow triangle, yes. Good. A yellow triangle with holes in it, but holes appear a lot in, in oh, well, oh, well done, Maeve. Yeah, you're pointing out beautifully, yeah. So um, those would be the, edge, the, the bottom edges of the triangle. And the top edge would just be that first that row I was talking about just now, it starts mm -hmm. at eight, ends in eight. So Pascal's triangle, which is constructed um, in a totally different way from the way I constructed Sipinski's triangle, ends up giving us Sipinski's triangle sort of buried in there somewhere. And this happens often in maths. A concept in one particular area crops up in another branch of mathematics. And so there are huge interlinks between the different branches of mathematics. And um, one area of maths I've always been interested in, um, particularly when I was younger, is called group theory, the theory of groups. And it's all about symmetries of objects and, um, and other kinds of symmetry. And that arises, that has applications, in, for example, in chemistry, when you're looking at um, the structure of molecules, crystals. Um, so, and um, oh, somebody said it also looks like a diagram about pyramid selling. Yeah, it's a bit like that. Yes. Yeah, and you're, you're right. It's very much like that. Um, oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> it's Illuminati. <laughs> oh, God, I should change the slide, shouldn't I? Yeah. So, oh, we've got, we've got time for one more thing, by the way, Linda. What do you think? Okay, we've got about five, four minutes. Do you want to do the water one or the chocolate one? <laughs> the water, the water. I like the water one. Now this next one, and I'll set it up quickly. I'm moving my screen back so you can see it a bit better. Oh, yeah. um, my assistant here. <laughs> 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 we'll, we'll, we'll drop everything. Let me just take the jug of water. All right. Going to, this is something you can do at home. Usually they say don't try this at home, but I'm going to, I'm going to, and I have to put my screen like that so you can see it. I hope you can all see that. Mm -hmm. I've got an ordinary tumbler and I've got some water. I'm going to fill the tumbler up right to the very top, as full as I possibly can. It's coming up to the top now. All right, okay, thank you. And I've got a bowl of coins here. And, um, I want you to think for yourself how many coins you think I can I can pour into the water, drop into the water without the water overflowing. So just think for yourself how many, how many do you think, Maeve? How many coins do you think I can put in here without the water overflowing? It's mm, well, I can see a little bit of space at the top. Yeah, a bit of space, isn't there? Yes. We soon get rid of um, that. And so with uh, I'm thinking like volume, there's only so much. Yeah, you're not going to get many so in the I'm going to say eight coins. I think you can eight. say eight. Okay. So other people might like to put into the chat what they what they think it's going to be. How yes. many? Yes. These are these are small pennies. You know, these are just ordinary UK pennies. Mm. Let's start. Let's let's start some. We've only got a couple of minutes, so let me just one, two, three. Four, 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ah, uh, I said eight. I'm lost. Ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Fifteen. Oh yeah, some people have said twenty, so well, we've got to get to more than twenty. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. All right. Kevin, are you right? Twenty-one. Hey. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Oh my goodness. Twenty-five. Look at it. Twenty-six. Oh. Twenty-seven. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. <laughs> Thirty. Thirty-one. Got a new bit here from Sangeeta. Forty, she said. Thirty-two. Oh, that. <laughs> Thirty-three. 33. 34. Oh my goodness, this is a tent. 35. 36. Oh. 37. 38. 39. <laughs> 40. Oh. It's just a little bit of a. Let's just try. That's 41. No, it's starting to drip more. Starting to drip, yeah. Oh, whoever said 40 was brilliant. Well done. Wow. The most I've managed to do is about 48. And uh, <laughs> I read about this in a book where they'd done 63, 63 coins. Yeah. 63. It may depend on the diameter of the, of the glass as well. I think that pro probably helps if it's a bit wider. But um, this, this is quite a narrow tumbler. But it, it, it is quite a, an astounding result. And it's all to do with surface tension, of course. The um, the thing on the top, of course, is called a meniscus, and it, it just holds, acts as like a sort of, um, I don't know, it just holds the, the, the surface tension, holds the, the surface together, and you can put coins in, coins in, yeah. So impressive. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's quite, um, it's difficult to uh, have fun over these, like, video calls sometimes, so maybe people who've been watching, uh, you could get yourself a glass of water, Pennies yeah. Yeah. and do some zooms with your family and your friends. What do you think? Yeah, we'll get people to guess because that's that's the fun bit. Because most people will say, well, if they think, well, it's probably going to be more than one or two. But so I'll mm -hmm. say, you know, ten or something like that. And then of course you can get a lot, a lot more than that in. Yeah. 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 Five months. <laughs> oh, we're out of time. How sad. Yes. Yes. It's that gone really down. flew. Um, <laughs> Wow. So yeah, we've 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 been live now for about an hour and a half. Uh oh, thank you, Catherine. What a great finale, she says. Yes. Oh, thank finale. You. Um well thank you everyone so much for coming. Um you know, probably people have come in and out. Um wasn't really expecting everyone to stay for the full hour and a half. So it was like sort of um organizers sort of drop in sessions that you didn't have to worry about sticking around for too long but you know um, I'm sure if you stayed for the whole thing you had an amazing time we've had a lot of fun we didn't get to get to go through all of the puzzles that we had um, so there's much more of our sleeves yeah. um, although I don't know how you would get that from us I haven't really thought this through <laughs> uh, <laughs> Can we share the puzzles with the children? You can share them with anybody. These are not ones I've invented. Um, they're very, they're old chestnuts, if you like. They're things that... Yeah, so like um, copyrighted. They're, no, they're, they're, they're all over the place, you know. <laughs> okay, well, I will find, um, I will find a way to send the people who came here the, the slides and things so you people can have a look. Because yeah, it's, um, I think that you were invited by a like an on your emails anyway, so should be able to send that to you. I will do that for you. 
<laughs> Ina, I am an imperial mass alumna, she says, but never ventured to the maths department. <laughs> <laughs> Look how lovely everybody mm. is. Yeah. Oh, you guys are great. And thank you for engaging with us in the chat and yeah, sending us some cool yeah. questions. We've like had a little bit of a debate. Yeah. yeah. And th <laughs> thank you to um, the BBC, uh, YSTEM, for having us. Uh, it's been a privilege to host this yeah. for you. So thank you, Linda. You're amazing. Oh, so are you. So are you, mate. <laughs> and thank you, me. <laughs> and um, we're going to be signing off. So thank you very much. Yes, See thank you. you. Later. Bye. Bye. Bye.